Hello, and welcome to episode 17 of Sports Betting Conversations. The title of today's episode is Elevating Sports Betting Engagement with Powerful Analytics and Automation. Today, we're joined by Ricky Gold, founder and CEO of Juice Reel. And as always, advisor at Data Heart, Kevin Twitchell. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Ricky, for joining us today. Uh, please tell us a little about yourself and your company. Oh, great to be on, Russell and Kevin. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Ricky Gold. I'm the founder of Juice Reel, which is to, to sports bettors, a suite of tools to help you bet smarter and, and get the most out of a sports betting experience. Yep. Excellent. And, uh, you know, I, I've been, uh, I've had the opportunity, you know, to you know, take a look at your, at your app and, um, you know, it, it definitely does something different that other apps on the market don't do, um, you know, which is, you know, the ability for me to intelligently look at, you know, kind of the history of, of my, uh, horse betting, uh, life, <laughs> let's say, uh, uh, since it became legal here in New York. Uh, so, uh, tell us how you came up with, uh, this concept and what drove you to, uh, you know, look at products such as this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I would say the the first ideas about Juicer, I grew up in a, a sports betting household and the first ideas that, that sparked this business were, if you ask any sports better, you know, how they did this past football season, you're rarely going to get, you know, a number as an answer. You're going to get a good, bad, uh, uh, and so, you know, to me, there was a gap in stats on yourself and people, you know, are obviously interested in, in their self, their performance, how they're doing over time. That was kind of the first thing in my head that said, you know, the world kind of needs this. And then, you know, more and more features, uh, you know, started evolving. And what kind of really made me decide to start this business was when I realized that by creating a product for sports betters that's engaging, that's helpful, that's beneficial, that you can also use that experience to benefit sports books by making sports betting actually more engaging for them and, and increase traffic at sports books. And that's, that's really why, what drove me to start this business. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, personally, one of my biggest gripes is not being able, like you said, to, to take a look at my sports book app and see how I did, uh, oh, you know, during a, uh, you know, football season, hockey season, basketball season, or, you know, any time frame it is just kind of a, a list of transactions. Um, so lo- let's maybe like dive a little bit deeper into kind of your, into your product. And, uh, cause you have a lot of like interesting things there. You have, uh, integrations with uh, a lot of sports books, you, you have lines across all the sports books so like a user is able to kind of compare what's going on um and then you have your uh what is it called the the, the juice no the daily juice yeah we call it, we call them we call it milliliters of juice uh, no, that's what it is. that was it yeah yeah <laughs> looks like you had some fun making this <laughs> just a little bit yeah yeah so, so so tell us a little bit more kind of like about all of the cool features that, that you have in, in your app Yes. So I'd say as a sports better, you download our app uh, off the app store, the Google Play store, and you connect in your sports betting accounts. So if you bet at DraftKings, FanDuel, wherever, wherever you bet, you connect in your account and all of your bet history automatically loads into our app. And from there, uh, with all your transactions in our app, we show you stats and metrics on your past performance you know how have you done on straight bets versus parlays and teasers what are your best sports what are your worst teams all, all of those kind of stats and from with everybody connecting in their betting accounts we we actually have pretty good insight onto who's a good better who's a bad better uh how are you know good betters and bad betters what are they doing differently on a on a given game and from a feed, you know, there's a bunch of features that, that we offer that, you know, help guide you make, you know, the most informed bet at the best line, but it all really stems from the fact that we're accruing tons of data and, and tons of lines from, from sports books to, to help guide that decision-making process. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I really like the the visualization, you know, that that you provide. Um, I got another cool feature that I noticed was uh, uh, the ability to kind of link directly to it a sports book because uh, you, you do um, show lines across different events by sports book, which is which is really nice. And uh, I think like with one click, you can get into that app and it's just that, that whole experience, uh, it's pretty intuitive, right? Uh, compared to other things that I've seen that are similar. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say, you know, there's an experience for a sports better to have before the game, during the game, and after the game. Uh, and that, and that's kind of what we're, what we really go after with, you know, before the game, we're helping you decide what to bet on. And then once you decide what to bet on, the next question is, where do you go bet it? And so we help you get, once you know what you want to bet on, you should of course get the best price, whether, you know, the odds vary from sports book to sports book. We help you almost in like a, an Expedia esque model, get you to the best sports book to go place it. And then once you place that bet, that bet then sinks back into our app and you can actually watch. We have a feature in our app that uh, shows you the live value of your bet as the game plays out. So if you bet on, you know, the Knicks last night, once you place that bet and that bet uh, shows up in our app, you can watch how that bet's doing quantitatively as the game plays out. You know, the Knicks score a bucket. It bounces up a little bit in value. They get scored on. It goes down in value and it bounces up and down, kind of like a stock uh, as the game plays out. And we and we show you some live betting options so you can hedge, you can double down. Uh, and we just want to, you know, help the user benefit as a second screen as they watch the game. And then once that game ends, you know, it could, it, you go back and you can kind of review your performance with all those visualizations we were talking about. And then the the cycle restarts where you need to decide what your next bet is. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's super. Yeah, I realized in using it that I'm a terrible better. So one of the, uh, <laughs> um, so but but what I like I liked it's very user friendly, right? It's it's you've done a really good job as far as the technology and you know someone to just jump on. What I also liked, and maybe you can talk about the business model a little bit, is the whole subscription model, right? So, because now I, I, I realize I suck at betting and my scores are bad. So, now you have kind of a, an advice. My, my, I was looking at my daily juice. I get some daily juice. Can you explain how, you know, your team, you know, your experts are, can advise me as the terrible better? Yes. So, so when everybody, there's a few different, uh, kind of payment models that sit into our app. I'll talk about the, the juice, the juice model right now. Yeah. Uh, I need, I need some juice. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. <laughs> the, the, uh, so we have an in-app currency. We call it milliliters of juice. It's not like a crypto or anything. It's, you know, like a consumable that you'd see in most, uh, most games online. And, what we do is with everybody connecting in their betting accounts, we automatically and anonymously put everyone's bets up for sale to be unlocked by the best, uh, the rest of the community. And because we know who's a good better and who's not, the best performing betters show up at the top of the list. And that's the actual advice that gets sold. So you spend our in-app currency unlocking what top performing betters are doing. So you can copy them and those top performing betters get rewarded as, as the rest of the community unlocks their bet. So different than, you know, the, the betting advice industry today is touts people who are saying that they're a good better and they're convincing you to go pay for their picks and you, you hope that they're a good better, but you don't have any stats and metrics on them. Uh, and they actually have to actively go and distribute the picks. You gotta, you gotta collect the money. It's an act. It's an active industry. Selling betting advice is not passive. You actually have to do a lot of stuff to sell yeah. betting advice. And the whole industry is driven by how big your Twitter following is more than, you know, your your actual betting performance. And so what we've created is a marketplace that operates totally autonomously, where everyone's bets are put up for sale. Uh, anonymously, everybody has metrics associated to themselves. So you know 
what you're buying. You're buying a real uh, a bet that someone has their real money on, uh, and you know how good of a better they are. And uh, they don't actually have to do anything to sell their bets. All they have to do is be a member of our platform to to receive the rewards as their advice gets sold. And surprisingly, I've gotten no rewards so far. <laughs> I don't rank. I don't get any rewards. I think I got my initial juice for signing up, and then it was just the slid off. It went dry completely. Um, so that's great. So there's a bit of a social element in this. So d- explain how everybody's complete competing for. We always talk about retention. You know, customer retention. You've got great relationships. You have basically every book you're linked to, most of them. You know, how do you create those deals, um, you know, to integrate? You know, because the integration to DraftKings was great. It was very simple. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really seamless experience from the user perspective where you you connect your DraftKings account within a minute. Your entire bet history is, is connected, in, is into our app. Uh, in terms of what the integrations look like under the hood, uh, I don't want to really jump into what that looks like uh, oh, no. on, on this call. Don't give away any secrets. No. <laughs> it goes quickly, <laughs> but it, but it's a relationship. You've built relationships with all these with all we have people. some sort of relationship uh, with with each of the operators. Uh, the bet syncing isn't always dependent on on those relationships. Okay, got it. Because you figure the data, you know. You own it, right? And um, you can download you know, your bets. So um, yeah, yeah. Like I said, yes. The sports better. The sports better owns their transactional information, and the sports better can choose to to share that with with anyone that they'd like. Yeah, and you always yeah. have to go back to place your bet on the on you know. See, so there's no betting on your platform. It's really it's really can't do that. Yeah, it, it, exactly. We're a tool to help guide your decision making process, guide you into the into the sports book. You'll always press submit on your bet within the sports books app because there's lots of regulatory like geo comply and, and whatnot that you know you're always going to press submit uh, within the sports books app. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, you know, in, in terms of technology. We- you know, again, we don't want to get too in the weeds, but we got to talk about technology just a, just a little bit. Like, um, how complex was it to kind of come up with like the right tech stack? Um, you know, the right um, you know programming languages to use, um, not only to kind of get off the ground, but also keeping in mind that you know you you want to be you know poised for for, for growth and uh, and so forth. Yeah, we're we're definitely a a tech focused company, and with our app, you know, relying on lots and lots of real time information, tons of data moving around, and the to create a uh, you know seamless user experience. You know, the there's nothing more important than deciding on what your your tech stack is and making the right decisions around how how to integrate you know tons of different data sources together. Um, so we we definitely put a ton of time into that because uh, you know that's as that's as critical as it gets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a very important decision. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not only for you know, newer companies like yourself, but you know for established uh, companies as well. You know, some of our clients out in Europe. I mean, uh, we've been working with them for you know over a dozen years and. You know they go through transformations every now and then where you know technology has to be you know refreshed yeah, definitely i mean it's to to luckily for us it's our benefit i mean it's a lot or i come from a, a tech consulting background uh right. and taking existing out you know architectures and technologies evolve so quickly a lot of some of the technologies that we use you know wouldn't really be the you know either didn't exist it or weren't you know readily available 10 20 years ago where it's it's definitely you know having started our company only three years ago the tech the the decisions around technology a lot harder for these you know older companies to evolve all their systems and have them all link and talk to each other 
Um, that's some, one of the benefits a, a startup has is, you know, we can be nimble with technology. We're not dealing with, you know, outdated systems. Everything's on the cloud, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and definitely it's a big advantage. So instead of lo looking at, you know, some ar archaic stuff and trying to uh, modernize it. Um, how, how are you getting the word out? Like, how are you growing? Like, so you said, you, now you're, you're, you know, we're just finding out of you, you know, we've heard, you know, and seeing it, 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 how is the general consumer finding you and what's that scale projection? We're talking about technology. So obviously like your Super Bowl moment when you think, you know, okay, now we're really going to scale. Um, what is that marketing conversation going on and how are you guys growing kind of your, your business and your audience? Yes, we launched our product football season 2021. And, and you know, we, we, I launched our product actually before raising uh, even a single dollar. Found an ask team of, uh, oh, nice. a, a lot of tech focused people all, all working for sweat equity. You know, we took the product from inception to launch without, without any capital. And since we, you know, we've raised, we raised, we've raised some money since then. And we actually just as of about, three weeks ago, released a brand new version of our app. So we've scaled up the initial version of the app for two years, got us, you know, uh, you know, past 35,000 downloads to around $600 million in sports betting handle into our ecosystem. But now with this, we, we did that through a lot of word of mouth, a little bit of advertising dollars. And now with this new version of the one that you guys have likely been uh, playing on, uh, we're we're looking to take a, a big step forward in terms of in terms of scaling up the the amount of usage of the app in you know through a through a mix of different channels. Oh, cool. Yeah, excellent. And uh, you know, one of the questions, Ricky, that we usually kind of wrap with uh, with all of our guests is, uh, you know, what do you see kind of you know down the down the road here with uh, sports betting within the next year, two years, five years? What does the future look like? in the industry or more specifically for, you know, uh, you know, something like what your app does. I think technology has, is, has a bigger and bigger impact on the sports betting industry. I think, you know, more of a focus on personalization, more of a focus on the in-play experience, I think are two big things that are, that are going to get bigger, uh, over these next two to five years. In play is, you know, obviously really a difficult experience to capture with, you know, latency between how fast the player scores to, you know, systems updating and having to send things to other companies. Uh, and there's a lot of B2B relationships where it all has to be a matter of a second where you can get burned for a lot of money. Uh, but technology has definitely helped trim that gap. And I think, uh, you know, more and more offerings in the live betting experience and more and more personalization around, around what's presented to you, you know, having exactly what you want to bet on in a sports books app showing up right when you log in is a different experience than, you know, logging and clicking NFL and then going to my, you know, New York giants. And yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Personalization, I think is probably going to be the biggest thing in my opinion that evolves. Yeah, yeah, that that that's one of the things that you know we've been talking about internally. Um, as uh, you know, uh, one of the major things that sports books lack is is that ability to personalize. And then exactly what you said, right? I log in and I have to you know scroll through whatever sport or search whatever sport I want to bet on, and then scroll through the best instead of you know having my own homepage. Yeah, so. let it come to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, let's grab any last. No, questions. you nailed it. You, you know, exactly why we started this whole conversation series. It was to meet people like you, right. And then yeah. doing some innovative things in the business and you nailed it, you know, as this business evolves, you know, it's, it's the technology and pe how people evolve with it. And especially on the data side and the personalization side that are going to help people win the day. So. We're going to be with you the whole way here uh, as you scale up. <laughs> thank you. I uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you for the time. Yeah. Thanks, Ricky. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. See you.